Hello everyone and welcome to this special reading of for the new moon in Aries which is happening today uh, March 24th of 2020 and I really wanted to get up early and sort of bask in this energy because the high point of this new moon at the very beginning of the whole zodiac in Aries <clears throat> is at her peak um, at 528 this morning. Um, plus, um, I also wanted to make sure that I got up, recorded the video, and had it posted before I begin my corporate work day um, here at home. Of course, it's we're all getting used to this new normal, which will probably be in place for a while. Um, but in any case, I felt it important to share and offer context before I get to the Sabian symbol and the card messages. Um, I want to offer a little bit of personal information. Again, I, this gives me context for this reading, for the very thing that I've been prompted to share. So <clears throat> over the past month, I have really uh, been struggling with a cold that I think... Um, came out of my allergies gone wonky because my allergies pop up at this time of the year. And this sucker has really kicked me in the behind. I won't I won't lie. <laughs> it's been very difficult and I haven't been able to put up card readings. I haven't even been able to do um, the monthly card readings that I usually do at the beginning of the month for certain clients because I literally had little to no voice. And then when I started to get my voice, I, I could talk for maybe, you know, a minute and then I would break into lots of coughing and congestion and blah. And it just, I really was not in a place of sharing at that time. Um, and instead, what <clears throat> I found is those four weeks have been a really important time of literally laying low. In, and just going within, but not even to really figure too much out. Um, it's more to let things kind of pass on by, doing a little bit of fact-finding, but really not doing anything externally with it, or not much anyway. Um, <clears throat> so that's been an interesting time. And then meanwhile, um, you'll start to see I'm going to be wearing hats now because I've started my chemo, which I call my elixir treatments, um, during this time when I've had the cold. So it's been an interesting start for these treatments. Um, but again, I feel just as I did last time, that that's why I chose this hat today. The stay positive message is core to this reading, and it's core to what my message is going to be going forward because it's all a part of this sort of cleansing and upgrade process that my body is going through to try to rid itself of these cells that just don't, you know, don't really help me to live a long and vibrant life. And so <clears throat> there's a lot of what I've found is that in this process is I've, I've really swung from one end of the pen with the pendulum, so to speak, all the way to the other end. And what I want to say is there have been periods even prior to me getting the cold and then the cold was a time of like going within <clears throat> and really, you know, not being able to verbally really express anything, not even to my own family. I, I literally just didn't talk for uh, basically three weeks anyway. Um, and then it was just a whisper. My family probably kind of liked it. I'm not going to lie on that either. But in that process, the part of the pendulum swing is there can be, and I, and I say this for all of us, you know, this is my job as a messenger and why I feel compelled to do these readings, is that we can gather data and it's right and good to gather information because our ego structure within, the, within our human body is part of what I call our wholeness. It's part of, we're both earth body and that big blue sky self part of you that is the all of you. 
that's much bigger than even your brain can even begin to fathom. But all of that put together is your wholeness. And so one part of the wholeness is the ego human structure that we are, we come with that, that standard equipment. And <clears throat> what the ego does is it wants to keep us safe. And so whether you're in a circumstance of, you know, everything going on in the world right now, or, um, and or, you know, going through something like a cold, which some of us are going through that, that is a common cold or flu or allergy related, <clears throat> that that too is, is uh, the ego spikes up, you know, or maybe you're going through treatment for something with your health, or maybe you're figuring out some relationship issues or work issues or relate anything in your life. Anything that you are worried about, your safety and your stability, the ego is looking out for you on that. So I'm not a person that's going to tell you to get rid of the ego. It's part of us. It's part of our human equipment, and it makes the wholeness. But the thing with the ego is it can only count on knowledge that it has from the past. That's what it looks to, because that's what our brain, where the ego lives, the brain contains all of this past experience, whether we have experienced it or we have um, witnessed it out in our world. That's all that the ego can count on. So just know that, you know, like that's, that's what it looks to, to say, okay, am I safe? What does my history tell me? And you can be fact-finding from because we're kind of taught to believe the experts and what have you. And so we're gathering lots of information. And the thing with the ego is if you stay in that place, which is only one part of your wholeness, it's not all of you, but it's an important part because it wants to keep you safe. It, it, I believe that the universe is wise, loving, giving, kind, compassionate. That is a core belief that I have. And therefore, I believe that we were given that equipment on purpose to help us. And so I do not believe the ego to be my enemy. But I also know it's not all of me. So just understand you can be gathering information and you can be looking at your history and, and what have you. But to kind of take a pause before because part of what the ego then wants to do is to <clears throat> take all the information divide it into buckets that are good and bad positive and negative and then it wants to say okay I've got a lot of this over here not much over here and I'm going to start laying down judgments or I'm just going to start sticking them all up on the wall and I'm going to throw some spaghetti at that or um, the, the quickest thing that we do, though, is to, is to lay down judgments right from that information. And we're not using our wholeness is my message here. So then when I'm saying wholeness, the other pendulum swing is when you allow. My other, my other belief is that we are truly, I believe that I'm part of creating my reality. And I do that through using my wholeness, through all of it. This wonderful ego structure that I can look to the past and I can gather information, like I can process and, and do all of that work. But before I divide and shuffle up and say, that's good and that's bad, and nah, 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 throwing out judgments everywhere, I, I'm learning. And believe me, this is a pro I'm learning that if I could just stop and then look to my wholeness to give me more information. And by that, I'm talking about stopping yourself and saying, I wonder, I wonder if the opposite of that is true. Or what would happen if I chose to believe that the opposite of what they might be saying could be a factor here. It's where the wonder, that, that inner child, that part of you that is 
like three, four, five years old that questioned everything and would go, why? And why does that have to be true? And why? Because of their religion, their color of their skin, what have you, the country they live in. Why does that have to mean that you hate them or that you feel that they are somehow lower than you, not as good as you? A three, four, five-year-old, that version of you does not know that. That is not intrinsic to who you are. And that young version of us, before we become really programmed, in order to get that ego to kick in, that's where we start gathering the history. That's where we start saying, this is right, this is wrong. This is how I make a decision. This is how I lay down a judgment. <clears throat> I'm inviting you to that really young part of you before that all came into place. There's a role for that history, but it's not everything. And that really young, innocent, and very balanced part of you, and actually pretty darn grounded in terms of your wholeness, that part of you really wants to have a voice in your life. And I find it's really helpful to just stop, to have the pause moment and to say, what if? or I wonder, and even with a piece of paper to be taking down some ideas. And for me, I find it really helpful to think about what the very opposite is of what everybody might be saying, or to notice when people around you or media or whatever, any kind of treatment you're going through, any kind of illness you're going through, what that might really mean. Does it mean that I'm very, very sick and I'm going to die soon? Um, or is it a very necessary cleansing that's happening that's, that's making me, you, whatever the situation is, into that much more of who I really came here to be? You know, it's really something when you turn things on their head and just choose to look at a different perspective. That's all it is. It's just, it's just another perspective. And it can just be for you, by the way. It doesn't have to be something that you shout from the mountaintops and then it causes more what I call stirring of the turds, where it just causes all of this, this, this chaos to ensue. It can just be for your enjoyment that you do this. And that's what I mean by tapping into that blue sky self or think about it as that inner child who really just doesn't um, necessarily see all of the rights and the wrongs and the hierarchy of life. And there's no understanding of that. But there is a real big place for wonder and we kind of lose touch with that. And I'm not saying, I'm talking about your wholeness here. So I'm not saying that's the whole answer either, but how refreshing it is to get caught up in um, being outside and seeing the wonder of nature or buying yourself some tulips that absolutely just capture your eye every time you walk through that room um, or just the smell if you choose to make bread, you know, in your kitchen and just that that wonder, the, the feeling that takes over you or listening. I mean, I really got caught on Lawrence Welk yesterday um, and it was interesting to see people's re many responses on Facebook around this. I've been trying to post a, something that just for me, it's a feel good vibe song each day that was prompted by uh, my friend Pam Stalker, I really loved this idea. And just something so innocent, again, from childhood. This is when I was no more than two, three, four, maybe five years old, that these specific memories are coming up. And the amount of happiness, it actually causes a physical tingle to go through my body. Do you think that is not 
doing something to my frequency of my energy in a really positive way. I have such a big smile on my face. I remember those moments. And it's it's something very silly to many other people when all this other stuff is going on. But I'm making the choice to be part of creating the frequency in which I live, which therefore affects what happens in my world. That's living from your wholeness. It's having a sense of wonder and really being willing to walk that edge, even at a time like this, no matter what you're going through personally or what we're all going through collectively. With, of course, taking in information, listening to sources that you trust, seeing how that plays out with the historic knowledge that the ego has, but then also take that knowledge and before you lay down judgment, give a little wonder to it. Turn it on its head. Could that be? Does it feel like truth? Does it feel like something? Because the wholeness of you is about love and balance and and that we truly do live in a loving, giving, expanding universe. I mean, perhaps I'm putting my belief here, but I have to for this reading. I don't know how to be a messenger without the beliefs that I'm wired with. And so just knowing that, to know for me to, t- to sort of do a, a truth test, something that makes that tingly feeling come out, is does it feel like this information is stirring more fear and uncertainty and adding more of a cloud of, of um, you know, nebulousness where we can't get our hands on any information that seems really solid and grounded? Is it creating more chaos energy? Or is it giving me something that maybe I can take bits and pieces and then I can add my wonder to it. Then I can really question it and come to a place that feels like what I believe the universe to be. As wise, loving, giving, and most of all, expanding. It's always expanding. That's what we came here for. Expansiveness. And to really test yourself in putting, taking something and turning it on its head. And does that viewpoint, no matter what anybody else thinks... This is about you as one individual. You're taking care of your frequency here, which is literally your lifeblood that runs through every part of your energy field, including your physical cells and your DNA. Is is that viewpoint that wonder creates, is that something that makes you feel like you have more room to breathe, that you have a little more clarity and less fear, that perhaps you actually feel a little more grounded instead of this feeling of like, I don't know, you know, where you're just living in panic all the time. Again, no matter if it's something personal or this more collective thing that we're dealing with. So with all of this, here is our symbol for this Aries new moon. And remember, new moon is a time of new beginnings. This is a time to set your intention And here it is at the beginning of the Zodiac, Aries, taking leadership in your own life. That's what Aries is. It is the lifeblood. It is the cannon coming out of that, that, the cannonball coming out of the cannon. It has tremendous power, but it's personal power. It's taking leadership in how you choose to conduct your life. This is a very important new moon, especially at this time. Okay, it's, it's really pivotal. So with that, with the degree point of where the point of this new moon, which was at 528 this morning, um, the Sabian symbol is Aries 5. And remember, 5 is the energy of the freedom-loving adventurer. And I can't think of a symbol within the 360 symbols that speaks as much to freedom as this symbol. A triangle with wings. And with what I just shared and why I really wanted to take the time to share all of that. The ego, the the gathering of data, counting on your historic knowledge of what's right and wrong and all of that. 
and then bringing wonder to it. Those are two parts of the three-part triangle. The magic, the magic key in it all, is when you combine them with that third line, when you connect those two, and you find something, and that's the bottom line I'm saying in a triangle, when you add that foundation to it, that's a combination. These two together, when you, when you put them together and you synthesize to something that feels like truth to you, something that gives you more clarity, it makes you feel more grounded, it makes you feel like you can take leadership in your own life, you know what to do, even if it's a tiny baby step. It dissolves fear and it dissolves lack of clarity. It, it, it dissolves all the turd stirring going on. Again, whether it's something personal or this more collective bit. When you combine those, that's the third part of the triangle. That's what gives you the wings. The triangle sprouts these wings and the wings are freedom. They're freedom to believe what you want to believe for yourself. This is very personal. I, my messages are about you and taking care of your shop, as I like to say. They're about, I want you to be the leader of your own life. And I don't, as a messenger, want to have the exact answers for you. I want to offer what I'm experiencing and the messages that I'm getting so that you can take the leadership in your own life. And the horses are the ones that taught me about freedom. They know it better than any animal that I've encountered in that early part of my work in the spiritual realm. And so this, this freedom is for you to simply watch your own. I don't even want to use the term frequency or vibration like I normally would. Frequency feels more exact to me. It's about you really paying attention to what am I focused on and I need to. I, there's an imperative to be the leader of your own life. And it's a leader that is believing in, that is based in, that is driven by personal freedom of choice and belief and it's a combo. I'm just, I'm just really encouraging you. It's a triangle we're talking about here. It is that, that ego knowledge. We are built with the ego for a reason. It wants to keep us safe. And that's okay. It's when we only focus on that that then the judgments start coming. So bring in wonder before that happens because the wonder opens you up a little bit more. You get a few more options you start to feel like you can breathe a little bit more. Like not everybody knows every answer for your life. You have your one of a kind sense of wonder. Okay, and when you bring that in and you combine the two and you come to something that feels more grounded, it feels more foundational for you. It doesn't make you all panicked. It makes you feel like then those wings can sprout out and you can have your own sense of freedom. And it can just be personal. This isn't something that we have to broadcast through Facebook as to what that is. Or Instagram or YouTube or whatever. It can be just a personal thing. It's about your own frequency. As a messenger, I care so much about your personal shop. The, the frequency of your energy because you are the creator of your experience on this planet based on the experience on the frequency you choose to hold and I'm telling you that you can have an effect on that you can make that happen for yourself this is about taking personal leadership but with an undertone at all times of freedom of thought and feeling and belief and passion okay so with that, I think that's a long enough, God, almost 30 minutes <clears throat> of an intro. So let's get to the three cards. So when I pulled these, my intention, again, for you setting, thinking about something to set as an intention for the new moon in the fired up, driven, let's get it done, Aries energy. I mean, this is really, 
the time to set an intention. If I ever I saw one, it would be this new moon. So I'm really happy I had my voice back again. Um, my intention when I pulled these was what do each of these options want to give as a suggestion or a possible direction of your focus when it comes to um, being driven by freedom? Like what is a source you could think about, you could wonder about um, when it comes to thinking about how to, how to bring more freedom into your, your thought, into your wonder? Because the wonder is the piece we all kind of miss. The ego is built in and it happens automatically. It's like an unconscious thing. It just happens. The wonder is the harder part. So that's where I feel like the support for all of us is needed. And what brings you, what could be a prompt to get you thinking more towards some subject area, some topic around freedom? to help you out, to help you start using both of these together in order to create that foundation, which can be a whole new way of believing in your, in your world and what the universe is all about, whatever your belief system may be around that. So the first card up was not a surprise to me from the way of the horse deck, which I haven't used in a really long time. And as I mentioned... And by the way, before I say this, you can pick one, two, or all three cards, whichever ones kind of speak to you. Some people may want to look at all three of these, but um, most of the time I say just go with whichever one or ones really, really pull your eye. So I wasn't surprised to see this because it was the horses who taught me about what freedom really is. I think they stand for a sense of freedom, okay? All right, this came in my vision um, just when I was up very early, very early this morning. Um, number 10, this is lightning horse. I was seeing lightning um, in my visions all during early this morning. So with these cards, this, this deck is by Linda Kohenov, and I really love to read her entries, um, at least just the beginning of it. Um, to give you some more specific wisdom that she specific she ties to the specific cards. But obviously there's a lot of inspiration involved with this card. So again, this is a this is a possibility for you to think about when it comes to building up that sense of wonder and and getting to a place of freedom, getting those wings to pop out. A triangle with wings is our symbol. You know, what does it take to get those wings popped out? They can't pop out until it's a triangle. So you need that basis of ego working with wonder before there's a bunch of judgment and stuff laid down. You just are coming to a personal belief, a personal way of thinking and feeling about the world and about your circumstances to raise your frequency. It, it comes down to your cellular level here. And both of these things, your ego as well as the wonder, are what help to create that foundation that you need. So, lightning horse, flash of inspiration, glimpse of the next level, unmanifested possibility. As clouds obscure the moon and stars, a lightning horse illumines the landscape and disappears into the night. The gift of this is inspiration surges like an electric current through your body, flashing hints of clarity to come. The challenge is when the imagination stirs, new ideas burst into consciousness, carrying tremendous energy. Yet these brief glimpses of potential can be hard to hang on to taking significant effort and dedication to manifest. And what I was really getting there is, for some of us, wonder actually can, act, can be the easier of the two in some cases. When you get your flow going of lots of inspiration coming through, lots of ideas, 
and we're just kind of all over the place. And this is where, again, it's a triangle. You need that partner of the ego structure. Part of the ego is very organized and it simply wants information and it wants to be able to kind of bucketize things. This is part of our human equipment. It's how we get things done here in a way that is safe and stable. I'm not saying to decouple from that. And what I feel from this is you could be a person that actually through this and through your own, what you're doing personally to pay attention to your frequency, you could be having a lot blasting off right now in terms of the wonder aspect I talked about. You could be loving that inner child kind of place and have lots of ideas, but don't know where you're going with them. So I'm feeling from this, the potential of a new moon is there's no light and there can be a lot of inspiration showing up at those times. But don't forget about the ego. Use those ideas to then begin to bucketize and to feel into what feels like solid to me here. What, what feels like stability to him, to me? What reduces fear? What adds more clarity? All these kinds of things, because that is based on, I feel our highest potential as humans is getting much more clear, much, much more clarity, much more easy direction, much more living now in the now moment and not making, just not making life so complex and not necessarily taking everything we're spoon fed and not using our own sense of wisdom that we all hold from another place, our wholeness. It's part of our wholeness. We need the whole spectrum. We need the whole spectrum of the wisdom. So I feel like there's, it wouldn't be a bad thing to employ the ego part of that triangle to help you get a footing that then allows those freedom wings to spread. In terms of the horses, they have plenty of wonder. <clears throat> they have plenty of ability. <clears throat> um, when I worked with them, I was doing communication and energy work, and I mistakenly went in pushing my agenda of energy work on them and very pointed questions. And they very quickly taught me <laughs> <laughs> Once I was opening to listening, they taught me that they know exactly what they need for energy work and I just need to bring my dowsing rods and whatever other tools I had um, that they specified and use that and they know what to do with it and I'm just a channel. And that they would bring up the things that they wanted to bring up in a communication session. And it wouldn't be based on a bunch of drama or an overabundance of, um, you know, sort of drowning in their own tears. They're very much living in the now. They have some, some um, programming from the past that might be in place, and that was true for some of them. Um, and some feelings about their relationship with their rider. However, they're, they're not really drowning in all of that, like we as humans might be drowning in our own sorrows. And I'm sharing all of this because what I'm saying applies to us as humans just as much. And the beauty of the horse and rider relationship and why it's so special is that the rider is the one that offers that ego piece of the puzzle the horse can have lots of wonder and power and a, and a drive towards freedom, but when it really all comes together, it's because the rider is instituting some, um, you know, process of uh, how you how you get through doing figures or, you know, how you do a type of riding. Or now we're going to do this. And now the rider is giving all the cues. That's that ego structure, it's very kind of, um, very structured in a way. And the two together are what make the magic of that stability. And then it's like the two of you have wings 
And those of you who have horses know when you've reached that. And this isn't necessarily um, for people needing to ride. I see people do amazing things all with groundwork as well, which the horses really appreciate a lot more than you realize as well. It's not all about the riding. Um, it's about the relationship. And you can, you're offering them that ability, giving them that, that sense of, okay, this is how we're going to do this because they've just got so much available that when they get honed down to here's what we're focusing on and we're right here in this moment and we're going to do this and then we're going to do this, there's this very strong sense of leadership. And the ego can be very good in that respect when it's under control and it's not off the rails and worried about, oh my God, oh my God, we're not talking about fear here and clamping down and I'm going to die. This is healthy ego that just says, okay, I've got a plan and here's what we're going to do. And there's a real confidence about it. That really takes off with these animals. And it's a really just good depiction. So I feel like bringing kind of a planned approach and maybe beginning to do a little bucketizing with all this inspiration because I feel like you have the inspiration. Let me just douse on that just to be sure. Yes, I feel like you definitely, <laughs> the inspiration is all there, but getting it, getting it honed in a little bit is where the magic comes in and that gives you more freedom at this time. Okay, I hope that's... Um, resonating for those of you who picked that card. Lots of possibility there. Okay, and then also not surprising to me, the next card comes from um, the medicine, animal medicine cards. Again, all three cards are based in this sort of elemental. It's a very grounded kind of a reading, even though we're dealing with kind of the woo-woo land of wonder with the ego land, which is much more grounded to create, but it's about creating a stability that is right for you. It's creating that sense of leadership for you, very individual, that allows your wings to sprout. And that means your wholeness, living from all of you. And that's what the freedom is about. And animals understand this so well, you know, and, the, and that elemental spirit of the earth, how I really truly believe life on earth to be, um, understands these concepts that we really can bring heaven to earth, so to speak, when we have the wholeness. You need both pieces. I can't stress that enough. Okay, so you have the bat. So I've got to look up the meaning, and I usually douse for what paragraph specifically wants to come up for this animal. 42. So 42 um, reduces 4 plus 2 is 6 in numerology, and that has to do with service. And it also has to do with your physicality and your health. Um, and when we watch out for those, it's also a number that has to do with real um, compassionate caregiving. So that's the service piece is really giving stabilizing yourself so that you can really give to others. So bat is about rebirth. This says, sacred bat flew to me from the darkness of the cave, womb-like reflections, answers it gave. Birth, death, rebirth, cycles of the whole, never ending, just eclipsed the journey of the soul. And definitely many of us are going through this rebirth right now. I sure as heck know I am with all this stuff going on with me. And new moon is always a time of rebirth because there's no light from the moon. Okay. Just want to check this. I'm doing upright meanings only as I verified with the cards. Okay. So it's this last paragraph. If bat has appeared in your cards today, it symbolizes the need for a ritualistic death of some way of life that no longer suits your new growth patterns. This can mean a time of letting go of old habits and of assuming the position in life that prepares you for rebirth, or in some cases, initiation. In every case, bat signals rebirth of some part of yourself 
or the death of, an, of old patterns. If you resist your destiny, it can be a long, drawn-out, or painful death. The universe is always asking you to grow. What was I saying earlier? Expansion is why we come. We, we just can't stay in one place, and we're seeing this in our world right now. We have to change. Things are going to change. There will be a new normal in many fronts of our collective lives. So the universe is always asking you to grow and become your future. To do so, you must die the shaman's death. And the thing with shamanism, I don't know a lot about it, but the thing with shamanism is the, the shaman does something called journeying. Um, and the way that I've experimented with that a little bit is to really think about my possible timelines moving forward. And this could be, you know, two months. This could be six months, a year, five years, ten years. I've done one that's out um, to age 70, so 20, 20 years, 20 years out. And it's just a really interesting exercise. Just, just if you were to do that, again, this is wonder stepping in. The ego's got nothing to do with this because the ego is looking at past history about what could be possible. It's listening to all the experts and is that even realistic? It's all, it's, it's based in what's safe and stable and what do I know from that. This is the side of wonder that I'm being pulled to for you. Okay, um, so that you can really be a caregiver to others more strongly, actually. And I don't know if that speaks to you, but that's what the bat is symbolizing is this six energy, a rebirth so that you can be more of a compassionate caregiver to others and really through your own vitality example, that's how you do it. And this concept of journeying is, it's a fun exercise actually. And again, employs that wonder. You just call in that energy of, I wonder, you know, as I think about my future, knowing that I'm always expanding when I'm here on the planet and that when I'm essentially, when we're done expanding, we're out of here. And that could be at any age. That could even be a newborn baby. And our brain has a really hard time with that. But the baby is doing the caregiving part because the parents are learning something so precious in that process. Or the death of, you know, a, a child or somebody that you love quite tragically and quickly. The, the brain, again, the ego cannot even begin to make any sense of that. I understand. But the wonder part can the wonder part gives you the wings enough, gives you the room enough. It's giving you room. It's giving you permission to say, but I'm really gaining something very special out of this because I realize everything that I had with that person and the things that I've learned, the things they've taught me, that they've been a part of my life. There's a real sense of gratitude once you're ready to get there. Um, and then they start visiting you, and that's a whole other level of gift that a lot of people don't even realize is, is happening, and then they just start to feel it themselves, and they see signs everywhere. It's such a gift. And I know that's not easy again, but it's the combination. Can you see the combination of the ego with the wonder that then gives more room I should be doing it like this, but see, I'm doing it like this because I feel like that is what gives the room enough for then those wings to sprout. <clears throat> so, sorry, I this is this reading is taking many tangents because I'm getting a lot of information for this. Um, my point with the journeying is for you personally. To really think, just just to wonder. No, I'm not even going to say think about. Put on your sense of wonder. For some people, I even, like I have my little magic wand from when I was probably 
God, six years old or something, seven, and we went to Santa's Village, and I still have it. And when I really need to wonder, I hold that thing. Some people have a magic cap that they put on, you know, or they, you know, I have aura sprays from um, this wonderful lady, Amanda Ellis. I just can't say enough about her. Um, or you light a candle and you just stare into it. There's many ways to get at this sense of wonder, to get yourself in a different place. Get out of the ego for a minute about what is truth and what, what is right and wrong. Just put that aside for just a moment and really think about if I were to consider what a future timeline within this life would look like for me, you know, how far out are we looking? You know, is this me a month from now? Is this me 12 years from now? Just just notice what I want you to pay attention to what comes up like that. But you got to get yourself in that wonder place first. However you do it. Some people do it in nature too. It's a great place. Or sit in a favorite spot outside or there's so many ways to do it. Um, but you got to just detach from the ego. Notice what comes up when you ask that question. You, Whatever comes first is right. That's all I'm going to tell you. Just trust it. And then begin to think about, and you're asking, I wonder what that, what does my life look like that, you know, at that time? You know, let's say it's 12 years from now. For some reason, that's coming up for me. Let's say it's 12 years from now. What does that look like? What, what am I, what am I doing? Am I working? Am I still living in my house? What is the things or what are the things that I enjoy doing the most? Are the people that are currently in my life still in my life? And don't attach sadness or any, we're not doing judgment here. We're just seeing what it looks like. I want you, this is you looking into your magical kaleidoscope at a future life, a future potential for yourself. And what the intention here is, is for the expansion that you have experienced by that point in your life. And believe me, all of us will be expanded by that, by whatever point that is. It doesn't matter if you're talking, what does my life look like tomorrow or within the next hour? You will be expanded. Even if you have gone through something that is highly contracting, that is still expansive. You are learning a lot. That is why I describe my personal experience of, I know it's such a silly example of a cold, but it really took me to my knees. I've, I've never experienced anything like this. And as a communicator, do you know how hard it is to not have my voice? Ah, so for a month of that and then starting chemo and not having answers and I don't have my second opinion yet. and ugh, There's so much I could get caught up on. And yet I found a way to kind of join these two that really put me in an upward spiraling place. And I can't not share that with you. I want that for you. I want that for everybody. That is the ultimate sense of personal leadership that gives us freedom. It's not leadership that's about power over other people. It's personal power for its empowerment for our lives that we need more freedom not less in terms of how we choose to think about and live about and care about our world that we personally live in and how we set that up that affects your frequency like it's so important so for you i feel that got that chose this card, I feel it's really about employing more of, it's inviting in more of the wonder. That's what's going to allow this then foundation piece of the triangle to come into place. And that sprouts the wings towards freedom of everything I've been talking about. But it's really thinking about there's rebirth through, you know, the bat flies into the night. They're, you know, do I have that wrong? Yeah, they're nocturnal, right. 
Um, so they, and that goes perfectly with the new moon. There's no light. You're flying into potentials here. And that's the way our life is actually built is we have many, many timeline potentials. And that's why it's so important to pay attention to your frequency and the direction of your thought. Because if you're in lockdown fear and you're listening to everything the experts are saying, if you have a cancer diagnosis, that is hard business to find your way into your potentials. But believe me, you have it. And I can only just give it through my example. I don't know what else. I, that's real for me. And I can talk to you about that. And you don't have to live that kind of an experience. And I, I hope you don't or anybody you know. But it feels like I'm going through it for a reason to share some stuff that it's possible to feel vibrant when you're receiving elixir treatments. That's what I call chemo. So, um, and, and to choose what I see as my timeline, even if it's just for the now moment. And this just applies to everything. So think about what timeline. I mean, this can be a really fun exercise. And, you know, you can focus it. You can ask, you know, that, that wonder part of me. You know, wonder me. <laughs> Show me um, a future timeline of my life where I am fully embracing my personal freedom and and sense of being able to work with my wholeness, these two parts of me that gives me a kind of stability that I've never experienced before. I mean, you can put qualifiers on that to see a potential timeline that ties to those things. It's all just through your intention. That's working with your wholeness. It's the wonder that you're employing. And that strengthens that third line that's necessary in the triangle. And out come the wings. Okay, that's beautiful. All right, the third card is from the uh, Fairy Forest deck. Um, and this was also not a surprise to see come up because it's elemental. These fairies are a part of the elemental kingdom. And so again, this is life on earth, and I truly believe we can bring heaven to earth, so to speak. Um, that's employing, like I said, the ego, very elementally based, earth life, being organized, sort of getting our ducks in a row, looking at the facts, like all of this um, bucketizing, that sort of stuff, having a plan, but then also bringing the wonder to it. That's sort of the other, that's the other piece of the wholeness. And that's what the fairies do within the earth kingdom. They bring kind of a sense of magic um, and a special, they, they want to make things special, but in a very sort of under, under the radar kind of a way um, that, it, that then makes it, makes any event um, very, very special. So when you see signs um, such as a feather or something out in nature that you you really catches your attention, a beautiful mushroom or something, or um, the, the uh, orange salamanders, newts, I, I always swear that the fairies put those there. Things that really catch your attention and you just remember them. It's something very special, but it's it's understated. It's not over the top. You know, so this is another example that I'm bringing up for you of, um, you know, the blending of these two. That yes, you can have the discipline, the ego structure to go on that walk in the woods, but noticing what you see when you're there, you're not just doing it to get to the top of the hill, the top of the mountain. You're noticing what's along the journey. That's equally important. And that's what creates the memorability and having a very special experience in the now moment. So you have number 40. 
So 40 reduces to 4. This is about really focusing on that bottom line of the triangle that I've been describing, creating stability. Okay, Queen of the Darkwood Elves. This says premonition, foreshadowing, mystery. A lot of these cards, all of them, all of these, I just want to point out, this is all about being in the dark, which we are with this new moon. There's no light to the moon at this time because the sun and the moon are together. The sun is not shining over to the moon. So what I get from her is, Mm, yeah, to really, it's very important for you to be in the now moment is what I want to say. Um, just like I was talking about the hike, for some reason that came up. Really taking in what you're seeing because you need to understand that what you're experiencing in your now moment is giving you kind of breadcrumbs of things to pay attention to that bring these two elements of the ego and the wonder together so you get the stability. There, your card is very much focused on how do I get to the bottom line? You know, how do I get to that stability so that those wings pop out even faster? You're a very driven person is what I feel. Um, and the fairies are very um, effective and quick. Um, they do a lot of work, again, under the surface of what our conscious awareness is. But the reason the hike is coming up, and I think it's beautiful. Um, my husband and I were talking about this last night. I love it that so many people are getting out because it's just the only way they can find any freedom, isn't it? It's, you know, they, they you start to feel closed in when you're in the walls so much. And I, I just love seeing so many people active in very, you know, separated ways. They're not all clumped together. Um, but to be able to have that level of freedom. But when you're doing that, please pay attention to the now moment. Or there's a lot of people who are really doing like deep cleans right now. It's just, it's anything where you're just, you're in this state of like, Nothing is, you can't see anything. You can't see what tomorrow is going to be. And again, this can be personal, personal stuff you're going through, or this more collective thing. I'm not only trying to tie it to the big collective thing. It's uh, the, the very personal is just as important because you're going through it for a reason, to expand you. Okay, to, and, and your interest, I really feel, in terms of this card reading, is how do I get to the bottom line? I need some stability now instead of, um, what is it, um, serenity now. Instead of that, it's stability now, but it's stability from your wholeness. I feel like you are transitioning from that ego place of like, that maybe you keep trying to like listen and you keep trying to find the truth and you keep trying to listen and you, your brain, it, you got to know when your brain is involved in so much processing to try to find rules and regulations and guidelines and you're really focused on that and like this must be it. This, I'm taking that and I'm shredding it all up and I'm saying da 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 da, you know, I, th I feel like you're moving away from that because it's like you've tried it and it ain't working. The wonder is starting to sneak into your life. I, I feel that from this card. I feel like the wonder is starting to come on in. This is part of your wholeness. You need both. Can't say it enough. The wonder's opening you up a little bit. And the more you stay in that, I keep feeling for you, Stay in the now moment. And all I mean by that is be present. So if you're on a hike, I want you to look around at what is under your feet or the vista in front of you or the times you need to stop, take a break, have a, have a chug of water and you hear like an owl hooting or something. You know, like just pay attention 
because my other strong belief and something I bring through as a messenger is I do believe everything is is um, meaningful. I believe there's purpose to everything, whether that's death or whether that is anything that we experience in our journey. The smallest of things, that's why people who know me on my personal Facebook see me post hearts all the time. I can't tell you the number of, I don't post nearly all the ones I see every day, but I can't help myself. I'm just like, I can't believe I'm seeing lettuce in the heart shape of a heart. What the heck? I can't help myself. Like, and I want, I want that for everybody because it, the lift, whatever it is for you, if it's just a hoot up, like you don't, and you don't even have to post it. It's noticing. I'm just saying, notice it. That affects your frequency because the owl has a message for you. The owl is singing because it wants you to hear it. Okay? Or that or that you stop and you see that mushroom that is like magenta colored. Go home and look up the meaning of what magenta is. Go home and look up what is the spiritual message from owl. Everything, the earth rises to meet you, to raise you to a higher place, to raise you to more of this frequency of freedom, of being. Okay, so it's all meaningful. Just please be... Your, it feels like a very simple message, a, a clear clarity kind of a message for you. Please pay attention. Or if your child says something to you out of the blue that's, that just really catches you, notice what catches your attention. That's how you know you're living in the now moment because you really, it's not just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Go away, I'm working, I'm working. Da, da, da. They're coming to you to say something, and it really catches you. It's like, whoa, you know? Why is it that you never take any breaks? Or, you know, just something, it, it just will, it will catch you. And that's when your wonder is coming in, because you're breaking out of, I gotta, I gotta sit here, and I gotta work, I gotta work, I'm working. And then all of a sudden something comes in that's wonder-based, especially from children, because they live in that wonder space most of the time. They don't have all this yet, the ego stuff built in, hammered in, programmed in. And so they are great deliverers of messages that, like, kick you out of that place. They bring a little bit more heaven to earth. So just notice. Please notice that. It's because it's bringing in more wonder, but you're really getting more to incorporating that than on a day, or even a minute-to-minute -minute basis, more into that bottom line that, oh, this is what it's like to use both, my wholeness, to then give me more freedom. It isn't about sitting there working like a dog. It's let's just go outside and take a little walk together. or Let's go on an exploration out in the woods, you know, Let's see what we see. Or let's play a little mystery game for just a half hour. Do you know how much more productive you're going to be when you get back to pounding away on the keyboard? Quite a bit, actually. And that's freedom. That's where the wings come out. You have more freedom. And it affects your frequency. And that's what I'm the most concerned with in my messages. I just want us all to have that greater freedom of, of being able to affect our personal frequency because that affects what plays out in your life, whether it's at any time in your life, not just times like these. It's any time in your life, and it comes down to your cellular, your DNA structure. It affects all of it. Everything is energy, and nothing is as important as your personal frequency. You are the keeper of your shop, the CEO of your company that you choose to keep. And it's your choice on what you want that to look, feel, smell like, be like when somebody crosses over your threshold, meaning your energy field. What are they experiencing? And that's totally your choice. But it is really powerful 
when you combine this triangle with wings, combining that ego structure and everything you know from the past, and there's a lot in terms of being able to organize and sort of implement our lives that's really helpful, but also bringing in the wonder and kind of turning things on its on their head and, and wondering, what would life be like if I thought this? Or what, in your case, what is that future timeline? And then that brings in this greater stability and that's when the wings of freedom pop out on the triangle. It has to have all three sides. The two working together makes the bottom line of stability, a new stability. Okay. There we go. Long enough reading, over an hour. Oh my goodness. You can tell I've been silent for like a month. So now I'm blabbing at you. So I hope to be back with regular readings this weekend is my plan. We'll see how it goes. Um, and thank you for waiting and being so patient. And I really hope this was helpful to you all. Um, I felt compelled to do it nice and early. I can get this uploaded before I have to start working. Okay. But I am going to take breaks. <laughs> get, my, get my wonder going is a mix with that. Thank you all. Wishing you a wonderful uh, new moon in Aries. What a time of potential. Set your intentions and think about creating your own triangle with wings. Bye-bye for now.